Hello YouTube, it's me Berg and I'm here with another Top 5 Wednesday. Now before I get into it, I want to just say that this is probably going to be my last Top 5 Wednesday video for a couple of weeks. I was planning on doing it until the 21st of June, but I didn't really like the topics for the, what is it, the 14th and the 21st of June, so I, I'm really not going to do those. So I figured... <laughs> We'll get this one done and then I'll come back with this kind of series of videos once I finish traveling and all of that stuff. So you can expect, hopefully, to find more of these videos coming or to expect more of these videos coming after the week of the 5th, I think. Hopefully. We'll see. But anyway, today's topic is books for your Hogwarts house. Now. I am a Slytherin, and of course, most people associate Slytherin as the baddie, the baddie house. Why can't I say that? As the baddie house. And yes, you d you have found mostly most of the bad figures from Harry Potter within the Slytherin house. But you gotta remember, we're not all bad guys. I mean, I'm not a bad person, I don't think. So I'm mostly going to focus on some of the qualities that have been stated about Slytherin House, whether it be cunning, ambition, and that kind of stuff. So without further ado, let's get into the five books I recommend for all you Slytherins out there. So because I'm a classicist, I'm going to start out with two books that I've read for classic, my classics degree. And the first one is The Odyssey by Homer. I think this is a great book for Slytherins because Odysseus, who is the main character within the Odyssey, is mostly known for his cunning. And again, Slytherins are also known for their cunning. Now, I've taken courses specifically on Homer's works, and one of the topics that we kind of discussed was, is Odysseus a jerk because of his manipulation of other people? And that's something that I find we could debate with Slytherins and their characteristics. Is being cunning a good thing or a bad thing? Does it depend on how much you use your cunning or how you use your cunning and if it's just used against people or whatever the circumstance? So I figured this is a great book to read if you're a Slytherin because it helps you think about that a little bit more. Now the other classic book that I have read that I decided to include in this list is Prometheus Bound by Aeschylus. Honestly, this could be any mythology or book in which Prometheus is mentioned because his figure is known as the trickster figure and I feel like he has the same kind of wily or cunning that Odysseus has and of course that Slytherins are kind of attributed as having as well. However, Prometheus is also a very much misunderstood figure if you read Hesioids works in days or theogony. He's kind of portrayed in a very negative light, but if you read Prometheus Bound by Aeschylus, he kind of justifies his actions or what has caused him to be punished by Zeus. So I feel like he is another character that most Slytherins can relate to because we're misunderstood. People immediately assume that if you're a Slytherin, you're some kind of bad person, and that's not the case. There's always a different side to a story. So that's why I included Prometheus Bound. So those are the only two classics I'm going to talk about. The rest are... Well, actually, no. I guess I did talk about a lot of other classics, just not ancient classics. So, the third one contains classics, but it is not a very specific book that I'm talking to you about. As my third option that I believe that Slytherin should read, dystopian novels in general. Now, I've been going on about dystopian literature for like the past couple of months. I feel like in every video I've mentioned dystopia, and that's of course again because I've studied it quite a bit these last couple of months. But I believe that Slytherin should read dystopian novels, whether it be 1984 by George Orwell, Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, or just any obscure, unknown dystopian novel, because it, it kind of keeps your ambition in check. Now, I, again, I know that we aren't just the extreme or the extreme negatives of the traits that we're giving, whether it be cunning ambition, but at least for me, I know that I need to keep myself in check when it comes to these uh, attributes because I know that 
if you go too far in them, that's not a good thing. But I mean, excess at all is just not a good thing. But for us, I feel like reading dystopians would help with that because dystopians are really where ambition has just been let loose and people just do whatever they want for their own goals and purposes. So I feel like reading a book where everything is kind of destroyed, it's a good way to kind of be like, oh, if I go too far, then this will happen and I don't want the world to turn out this horribly. So that's why I included that kind of genre on this list. The fourth book I want to talk about is The Chocolate Wars by Robert Cormier. I have a book review on this that I made, I think, two years ago. I'll have it linked down below. But this book is basically about a kid getting bullied, like extremely bullied. And I guess I included this as a kind of warning to try not to play into the kind of role Slytherins are made out to be. I guess so I... It's mostly to show you that Slytherins aren't necessarily bad, but we need to be careful and understand ourselves more and know that bullying is bad, that we should not do that and not play into our Slytherin stereotypes. And finally, I included The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which is the third, no, second, second book in the Chronicles of Narnia, right? Yes, the second, it is the second book in the Chronicles of Narnia. Now, the main reason I included this is because of Edmund Pe Pevensey. He is the child within the four siblings who kind of starts off on the wrong foot, but through this novel we see and especially throughout the entire series, we see how he grows and learns from his mistakes. And I feel like it's kind of similar to how we Slytherins are again portrayed. We're portrayed as the bad guy and we're not. So it kind of shows how we can try to fix that stereotype. And also, even if you have done something wrong or made a mistake, there is a way or a chance to redeem yourself, and I think this book really shows it. And of course, I don't know if you've seen it where they have the Pevensey children just sitting down and they're sitting in colors from Hogwarts houses, and Edmund is always depicted as being from the Slytherin house, so yeah. Which is fitting because I think his character is kind of given a lot of Slytherin stereotypes. He's kind of pushed to the side and seen as the bad child, and so he plays into that. And I think, again, that's really good. We shouldn't play into it, but even if we do, we can redeem ourselves. Those are the five books that I think you, my fellow Slytherins, will enjoy, but I really don't like just saying that to houses. It's really hard. We're not all the same person. So I don't think, maybe not all of you Slytherins will enjoy these books, and I'm also not saying that the other houses will not enjoy these books. I think you totally will. So honestly, anybody could read these, but I think if you sympathize or characterize yourself as being cunning, ambitious, and just generally as a Slytherin, you will enjoy these books. Let me know what house you are in, what Hogwarts house you are in, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.